What's up everybody? This is Jason from jasonscustoms.com and today I'm focused on the Quamba Carbon. It's a PC only stick. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's a PC primary stick but happens to work on PlayStation 3. So if you are a diehard PC fighting game fan, then this video is for you. If you aren't a diehard PC fighting game fan, this video may be for you because you may want a low cost sub $80 stick that you can modify and make work with the current generation of consoles. So without further ado, let's break this thing down and see what makes it tick. Quamba designed the Carbon to be a primary PC stick. It's small, inexpensive, and geared for those sitting behind a desk, not necessarily someone traveling. The price is right at only $70, and its overall quality is pretty good considering the cost. The artwork is nice, and the look is quite attractive, with all the black parts and Carbon artwork complementing each other nicely. The clamps on the back of the case are made of plastic and feature large threads, making loosening and tightening them simple and quick. They added some rubber material on the inside part of the upper clamp to add friction and cushioning where it makes contact with the desk. A nice touch that would make these clamps an absolute fail if it weren't installed. Once you attach the stick, you can remove it from the clamps, leaving them in place so you can later move the stick from your desk to your lab or vice versa. When clamped into place, it's sturdy enough for casual play, but one salty session could shatter the clamps pretty quickly since they're just plastic. The USB cable is tucked away neatly behind a door, but it is also plastic and will likely fall victim to fatigue or failure. This isn't unique to the carbon as many premium sticks are victim to the same thing. Measuring the USB cable out shows that it is about 6 feet long, which makes sense since it is designed for the PC market and most PC gamers sit within a few feet of their computer. Opening the stick is easy. Void the warranty and poke through the sticker to remove the first screw. Work your way around and remove all six screws to separate the two halves of the stick. Once you look inside, you will immediately notice that all of the buttons and the lever are Quamba original parts. Not surprising given the low cost of the stick. The PCB at the top is the hub for the stick and easily accessible. Removing buttons is straightforward. Remove the wires and simply squeeze the tabs to pop it out. You can easily swap in Sanwa or Samitsu buttons into the carbon since it uses basic 30mm holes. The lever is more traditional than seen in the drone. The gate pops off by squeezing the clips and working it off. Inside, you see the Omron switches on a PCB that looks very familiar to the Sanwa JLF.
It comes out pretty easily and you will quickly notice that everything about it screams Sanwa. A side-by-side -side comparison with the Carbon's PCB and the JLF's PCB, you'll notice quickly that they're almost identical in every respect, all the way down to the JST-SH5 connector. Since the lever PCBs are so similar, you can drop a JLF one in with ease. If you look at the stock JLF restrictor plate, it looks like it should fit. It seems that the holes line up, the clips line up, but if you look even closer, the plastic housing of the lever gets in the way. Advanced modders or risk takers will see this as an opportunity to break out a Dremel and clear the way, making it fit. Removing the lever is straightforward. Remove the ball top and shaft cover using the slotted cutout on the bottom of the shaft with a flathead screwdriver to prevent it from turning while you remove the ball top. Remove the four screws from the lever and it'll come right out. Overall, the lever is pretty basic as you should expect since it is a Kwamba original. A Sanwa JLF fits right into place without any concerns, so that upgrade may be worthwhile if you pick this stick up. A Hori Hayabusa, on the other hand, may fit mechanically but the kick button number one interferes with the wiring connector. You might be tempted to rotate the lever, but then the plastic wall gets in the way. Unless you mod the lever, this is not an easy install. I don't recommend it. Simitsu levers work fine. Here I test in LS32 and it lines up properly. I was curious about the depth of the lever body, so I test fit the base to make sure nothing rubbed. My findings showed that it was fine and this should be an easy upgrade. Removing the PCB is straightforward. Kwamba used JST style connectors everywhere, so removing all of them was easy. No glue anywhere to be found, thank the lord. After the cables are removed, remove the screws that hold the PCB down and it comes right off. As with many low cost sticks, all of the aux buttons are rubber dome style switches. Closer inspection of the PCB shows that everything is labeled making it very mod friendly. Even the switches on the front like PS, Start, and Select have test points on the bottom of the board facing inside the case, making them accessible for advanced modding. It will require some fine soldering, but those who are accustomed to doing it, this is pretty straightforward.
On the bottom of the board, it's quite easy to tap into the five volt and ground lines coming from the USB cable. So you can add a secondary PCB or pad hack quite easily. Since this stick lends itself to modding better than the drone, I wanted to see how the signals behaved when it was powered up and not synced with the system. I connected the VCC and ground pins on the USB connector to a Corad power supply and provided 5 volts to the system. Using my multimeter, I tested the signal pins and found that they were all left in a non-pressed state, i.e. they were high. So no diodes are required of adding a secondary PCB and you want to keep the stock one in place. Further checks show the PCB is common ground, making it even better and easier to mod. Playtesting the stick was fun. It stayed put on my workbench courtesy of the non-skid pads on the bottom, but the start button did get in the way due to the way I hold the lever and I accidentally paused my game. If I was in a tournament, obviously I'd be disqualified and the person I was playing would be pretty upset. Other than that, it was very responsive and worked just as well as any other stick I've picked up in the last few months. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Carbon. It features some cool things like clamps, so if you're a table player, you can clip it to your desk and not have to take up valuable real estate. It's got a better feel overall than the drone, like it's maybe a little thicker, different plastic. Uh, and the modability, or basic modability of it, is actually very good. I give it an A. And I do that because you can put a JLF in it, you can put a Simitsu lever in it, and you can swap the buttons out real easy, and it all just works pretty nicely. If you want to do something crazy like swap the top panel out or uh, anything more advanced like LEDs or even pad hacks, I think you could probably do it, but with the way the shell is designed and it being plastic, it's probably not worth it. Now, the nice thing about this stick that I've pointed out already is the PCB is very user-friendly. Quamba once again did an excellent job of labeling everything so you can quickly and easily get to the points that you need to if you want to do some soldering to it. Unlike the drone, the Quamba Carbon actually has test pads or test points on the PCB for your home, your select, your start, your turbo, your menu, etc. So you can solder to those some fine thin wire like maybe 26 or 28 gauge wire and run that to an auxiliary board like a Brook Universal Fight Board if you wanted to maybe quad mod this. Now the stick isn't exactly the biggest in the world on the inside but for advanced modders I would say this is probably a B or a C level stick. You can easily get to all the stuff you need under those dome switches without worrying about affecting the operation and the fit of the stick overall. If you're a diehard PC fan, like I said, this is a good stick for you because it's cheap and it is effective at what it does. Uh, while it doesn't have the highest quality parts inside, it's all Quamba branded stuff, you could easily upgrade some of the parts for relatively cheap and relatively quick. Uh, the lever, as I said, is easy swapped out, the buttons are standard sized, and the case just is a nice overall thing. So. In summary, if you're looking to spend under $70 for a stick, yes, it is $69.95, that is still technically under $70, and you don't care about having premium stuff, this is okay. If you're looking for a stick that has those premium parts, be prepared to have to upgrade these. The standard parts are okay, but they're not anything like you're used to if you've fought with Sanwa or Simitsu parts for many years. If you're looking for a good second player stick that your friends can use when they come over and you're only playing on PC, this is also a good stick to have on hand. If you're looking to take this to tournaments, I would look somewhere else. Everyone I know has upgraded to PS4 and no one plays on PC because the sheer cost of having that many gaming rigs. So this not working on PlayStation 4 could be a deal breaker for you. Uh, everything is migrated to PlayStation 4, so PlayStation 3 compatibility with this stick is kind of a moot point. Uh, and at that point, if you're gonna, if you're looking for something that can, you can take to tournaments, you're not gonna want to use this anyway because again, you're probably a more serious fighter. You've probably been around the block, and you're gonna want to spend at least 40 or 50 dollars just upgrading the internals of this to get it to a point that you are used to and comfortable with. 
Now, if you're just getting into the market and you need something quick, cheap, and easy to get that actually feels pretty nice and works pretty well, this is an excellent buy. I would recommend picking it up if that's the case. All right. If you thought this video was great, give it a thumbs up. If you thought I'm a chucklehead and I shouldn't be making these, give it the thumbs down. I want to give a special shout out to Quamba USA for sending me the stick and letting me tear it apart on video for everyone. They understood that it was going to be tear torn apart and criticized heavily and given an honest review, and yet they still were okay with it. So to me, that means Quamba 1 wants the feedback, and 2, they are listening to what the fighting game community says. I know I covered this in the first video when I did the drone teardown, but I can't thank them enough, because not a lot of companies are willing to do that. So, until next time, I would encourage you to visit my website, www.jasonscustoms.com, and that's Jason with an E, and check out the Panzer Fight Stick and some of the other stuff I've got going on. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to break down the Quamba Crystal.